Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today, this one's gonna be a quick one. We're gonna take the ADS-B Go Box, which is the big orange thing sitting behind me. You guys have seen it in previous videos. It's, we're just carrying on the series here. We're gonna take this Go Box and we are going to make it a Wi-Fi hotspot, all on its own, so that people can walk up and connect to it and they can see the planes that are overhead. So my goal for this part of this project is I wanna to go to Oshkosh and I wanna set this thing up on top of my RV trailer and hang out and see what planes are going overhead. And if somebody walks by and they see the, you know, the TV screen behind me with the planes on it, I don't want them getting into my Wi-Fi network. I want them to be able to see on their phones when they're within Wi-Fi range, what's going on. Sound like a plan? Let's do this. From where we last left off in our install video, you should be able to log into your ADSB Go Box with the password that we set it to and the IP address that we left it on on your network. If you can't, go back and check out that video for how to do that. For now, I know where it is and I am going to log in over the ADSB config network, which happens to drop the machine off at 172.23.45.1. I am going to show you the files that we need to change. And then in the description down below will be some information on where those files are and what to add so that you don't have to worry about like frantically writing notes. I got notes for you. We're all set here. First thing I'm gonna do is go into the WPA supplicant file. This is the file that sets up all of the Wi-Fi networks on your Raspberry Pi or other Linux type machine. In this folder is the WPA supplicant.conf file. So I'm going to edit that file, but I need to be a root to do that. Okay, now that we're in this file, you will see that there is an ADSBX config network. It's set to disabled and then it gets enabled during the web config script that starts up and a bunch of other settings for that network. We're gonna put one right after that using very much the same format. Network SSID equals ADSB. Call this what you want, like welcome to my Go box if you want to do that. I just happen to call it ADSB because it fits. Uh, mode equals two, frequency equals 2432, key management equals none. These are the parameters that you need. The most important thing is that you give it a name and you tell it that it doesn't require a password. And then this box will be isolated from your network. So do not store anything on this box that you want people to not know. As an example, this is my home Wi-Fi SSID and this is not my password. So if somebody were to log into this box, somehow gaining access to the password, we changed the password in the last video to log in as the Pi user, they would be able to see this as your Wi-Fi network and then log into your home Wi-Fi network. But since this is not my password, they can't do that. And then if you ever needed to get back in, all you need to do is change this to your password and comment this one out and it will be back on your Wi-Fi network at home and ready to roll for you. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do, there's literally a million ways to do this. Like literally, like not even kidding, there's a million ways to do this. I'm gonna put this in the rc.local file because it's easy and we like easy on this channel. rc.local, if you're familiar with old DOS computers, it's like the autoexec.bat. It's the last executable script that runs on the way out the door of booting up the machine. And in this file, I'm gonna to go to the bottom and it's important that you put it before the exit zero. If you put it after the exit zero, the script has exited with a zero return status. So it will never run. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna turn off Wi-Fi power saving. I don't want the Wi-Fi device to go to sleep while I'm trying to serve out Wi-Fi traffic. That would be kind of counterproductive to our task at hand, right? The next thing I wanna do is I wanna set the IP address of WLAN zero to equal the IP address that is used throughout the ADSB exchange image config file. Again, there are a million ways to do this. I just wanna cause as little harm in this sandbox as possible. Uh, user SBIN IP address replace the IP address in question slash 24 for a class C type address space, even though it's a class B address range, but you know, CIDR. Uh, the device is WLAN zero. After that, I want to start DNS mask, M-A-S-Q. This is a very lightweight, small service that does DHCP, DNS, router advertisement, etc. And the task of this device is to get you an IP address after you get connected to the Wi-Fi network. And that is it. I told you it was going to be quick. All you need to do is reboot the machine and you are back in business. On my MacBook, I need to come up and click my down arrow and there is my ADSB. There is one more thing that I wanna do though to make this easier for people to come and visit my Wi-Fi. Let's take a look at that. You guys have all seen QR codes before. This is not any different than a regular QR code because this is exactly like a regular QR code. It is set up for advertising Wi-Fi addresses and getting you to be able to connect to it. So I went to this QR code generator website and I picked Wi-Fi. The link for this will be in the description down below. I typed in my network name of ADSB and I typed in 
nothing for the password because there's no password. And then I hit generate QR code and it pops this QR code up over here. I can then take these QR codes and I can customize them and I can pay extra for the service if I want. Or I can just print these out nice and big on a piece of paper and stick it up on a tabletop right out in front of my RV camper where I've got my ADSB Go box set up, my, my big bright orange box behind me that I, I wanted to make eye catching just for this very reason. So this will get the user the ability to pull up their smartphone, aim their camera at it, and scan the Wi-Fi code, and then connect to the Wi-Fi network. A note about Wi-Fi networks on modern Android OS. I run Android, maybe this happens on iPhone as well. It tries really hard to determine if you're connected to the internet. You're not gonna be connected to the internet here. And then it's gonna complain and do a bunch of other stuff. Just roll with it. It's a it's a free way to see the planes that are overhead. We're not trying to solve all of the world's problems here. This is the code to get you onto the Wi-Fi, but after we do all that, we still need to get to the website. I did this one too. This is a regular URL, and this is the IP address of the ADSB Exchange box that we built, and then TAR 1090 gets them the 1090 megahertz ADSB overhead. You can also generate another one for the other network for the ACARS data if you wanted to do that. And it's the exact same process. You just type in the ACARS address instead and then print this one out and stick it next to it. So maybe on a sheet of paper, have it say, scan here to join the Wi-Fi network to be able to scan here and see this website and track the planes that are overhead and be all friendly and happy about it. The whole point is to get a conversation started about radio traffic and how cool it is to build little tinker boxes like this and, and awesome stuff like that. Now, another word of caution, word of advice, word of information. Another point of information for you is that this thing is not connected to the internet. So you're not going to get the pretty maps and you're not going to get the images of the airplanes. You will get plenty of airplane data for what's flying overhead. And since you're actually going to be in this scenario at an airport where you can see planes flying overhead, you will literally see planes flying right over the center of your radar spot here. And because you're outdoors, you'll see a better coverage map. I was indoors when I took this screenshot and on top of being indoors, it was also freezing rain. So there weren't any little birdies flying out either. But I did manage to catch this one plane and it is C04. Fox, 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 and you can tell from the information on it, this is all the stuff that you're getting right out of the airwaves. It's a Boeing 737 MAX 8. It is registered in Canada. All kinds of other useful stuff, 524 knots. It is at 38,000 feet. What its position is, GPS coordinates, it's 25 miles away. Source is ADSB, and then the relative signal strength indicator of minus 8.3. So tons of information there. And like I said, if it wasn't such bad weather and I wasn't indoors, I would have more planes overhead. But this is still really neat information. All right, so next up, we're going to take this thing to the airport and watch some planes fly overhead. But we're going to wait for weather to be a little bit better. It's still snowy and nasty here weather-wise as I'm filming this in Wisconsin. And there aren't any little planes flying out of the local airport because there's about that much fresh snow in the last hour on the ground. Not good for takeoff or landing. But I definitely want to see the, the plane fly over the, the center dot on the radar and see it fly over my head at the same time. I think that's going to be pretty cool. There is a video right up here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll be over there waiting for you.